the integration of African Americans in the Southeastern Conference by Matthew Lovelace and Aidan Kunzman. These are present-day highlights by top-tier African American players in the Southeastern Conference. Players such as Kelvin Taylor, Tennessee quarterback Joshua Dobbs, and former Heisman frontrunner Leonard Fournette. But there's a catch. Without very brave people, this never would have happened. African American athletes never would have played in the Southeastern Conference. Without brave African American athletes, the entire landscape of college football would be changed. What happened was um, uh, the governor invited uh, me uh, and all of my family, father, mother, uh, brothers, down to the, to the governor's mansion. Uh, for dinner, and uh, we accepted it. Uh, went down there uh, to Frankfurt, uh, had a great dinner. My high school coach was there, uh, Jim Gray. When I was being recruited, uh, I asked the question, well, how many, how many African Americans go to UK? <laughs> and I think the number that I was given was probably a little bit higher <laughs> than what it actually ended up being. You know, I, I heard uh, a high uh, hundreds you know, but when we got there, it's probably low hundreds, if that many. So, so yeah. It wasn't. Throughout Nate Northington's recruitment, he was harassed by fans of Kentucky that did not want an African American player on their beloved team. Nate Northington, the first African American to play in the Southeastern Conference in any sport of any kind, was known for his blazing speed and incredible agility. Nate Northington and Greg Page arrived at the University of Kentucky in 1966, and Nate Northington first stepped on the field in 1967, although local news broadcasters failed to recognize the historical significance of the game, it will always live throughout SEC lore. In Nate Northington's first career game, he dislocated his shoulder after three minutes. Of the game, a 26-13 defeat, he remembers almost nothing. Greg Page did not play. The night before that game, he had died. Greg Page sustained a severed spinal cord during a half-speed defensive drill. He had been paralyzed for 38 days. Greg Page arrived at the University of Kentucky as an all-state 6'2", 220-pound defensive end. There was a key turning point in Alabama's road to desegregation. In a game against a desegregated USC team, Alabama lost 42-21. This game is known for changing fans' minds and becoming the beginning of the end of segregation. Many people accredit the winning of this game to star USC African-American running back Sam Cunningham. In an important bowl game against Syracuse, a segregated Tennessee game required the Orange to bench all of their African-American players. Tennessee eventually won the game. In many games against Northern teams, Southeastern Conference teams that were segregated required the Northern teams to bench all of their African American players. In a game against a desegregated Tennessee squad, the University of Alabama lost. This enraged Alabama fans. Alabama fans soon felt as if desegregation was the best option. However, there was still controversy. The encounter between African American players and Caucasian players on a football field was soon leading to a mass number of injuries. Many appoint Greg Page's death to a white player purposely hurting an African American. Fans' minds were opening up due to Alabama's lackluster season.
the game against the University of Southern California and the game against the University of Tennessee might have been a plan for Coach Bear Bryant, a plan to open up fans' minds to the idea of having African-American players on their team. After the integration of African-American players on the Crimson Tide, Alabama scheduled yet another game against the University of Southern California. Alabama won that game, and it was seen as a plan to finally show how valuable African-Americans can be in the game of football. Exploration means to tread on unfamiliar territory, and that is exactly what Coach Bear Bryant did by integrating his team. The exchange of ideas led to all of the Southeastern Conference being integrated, ending with the University of Mississippi. After integration, the University of Alabama went on to win three more national championships in the Bear Bryant era. Since the last team in the Southeastern Conference integrated, the University of Mississippi, the SEC boasts the most national championship wins and has always been a powerhouse. This past year, the Heisman Trophy, an award given to the best player in college football over the course of one season, was awarded to the University of Alabama's Derrick Henry. This prestigious award was given to him due to the fact that he broke the SEC's all-time rushing record set by Herschel Walker. He is the perfect example of a fantastic African-American football player in today's Southeastern Conference.